Thank you all for joining us bright and early this morning. Um, we encourage you to move closer so that you'll be able to see some of the musical examples we have up if you would like to, if you'd like to do that. So please feel free to move forward as you like. We'll first introduce ourselves for those of you who may not be familiar with who we are and what our work is about. I am Suzanne Stumpf and this is Daniel Ryan. We are the co-artistic directors of Musicians of the Old Post Road. And this is Maria Diaz Canedo, one of the founding members of La Fontegada, Mexico. I'm a longtime National Flute Association member, and I've performed in Europe and throughout North America on flutes from four centuries, Baroque through modern. I have been teaching college level positions for many, many years, uh, most recently teaching at Wellesley College for over 30 years, coaching chamber music and teaching flute and Baroque flute. I have been recently named a faculty emerita there. Harpsichordist Daniel Ryan performs on a variety of keyboard instruments, organ, harpsichord, and forte piano, as well as being a, a Baroque cellist. He's performed across Europe also and across North America. He currently is the historical keyboard instructor at Wellesley College. And Maria is a historical flute specialist, both on recorder and traverso based in Mexico. She holds a doctorate degree in music from the National University of Mexico, where she is now a full-time professor on the music faculty. She has performed throughout North, North Central and South America and in Europe, most, most especially with her ensemble, La Pontecada. What we all have in common is an interest in early music, historical performance, and a desire to explore little known repertoire from past centuries. Both of our primary ensembles, Musicians of the Old Post Road and La Fontecara, present programs that are based on themes and groupings of works that shed a broader light on the cultural milieu of past centuries. Musicians of the Old Post Road was founded in 1989. We just completed our 30th anniversary season. We take our name after our acclaimed concert series, which brings historical repertoire performed on historical instruments to historical buildings and venues along the historical old Boston Post Road, a route that flourished precisely during the eras of our repertoire from the Baroque through the early Romantic up about until 1840. In addition to our concert series, we have toured in Europe and performed at festivals and for presenters across North America. La Fontagara is an instrumental ensemble dedicated to the performance of Renaissance, Baroque, and Galant music from about 1450 through 1770 on replicas of original instruments. They were founded in 1988. They have toured widely in Europe and throughout the Americas, in addition to giving frequent performances in Mexico City, where they are based. Our two groups have collaborated on a number of projects from the mid-1990s through to the 2000s. One of our projects included some wonderful little-known music by the Catalan brothers Juan and Jose Pla. The spicy Spanish influences in their music inspired us to call our CD Galant with an Attitude. We will be performing a couple of the works of the Pla brothers for you today. Because of our interest in researching, finding, and performing lost chamber works, from the outset, we have been working from copies of original manuscripts or early editions of the repertoire. This presents some challenges. Most often the material only exists in parts, not in full score. Also, largely due to accepted styles of playing that were part of the performance practice of those periods. Much of the manuscripts are without articulation and expressive markings, or at the very least, what is given in the individual parts is inconsistent from part to part. So to save on rehearsal time, we practically became accustomed to creating our own scores from manuscripts so we could try to sort out many of the anomalies in advance of beginning rehearsals. For Old Post Road, the creation of these scores inspired us to publish editions of our work to make the works available to other musicians and to further our cause of promoting the terrific music that has been forgotten in the past but that we are now rediscovering. The first piece we will perform and discuss is by the Pla brothers, Juan and Jose Pla. They were internationally renowned composers on oboe and flute who toured all over Europe and published their music in London, Paris, and Amsterdam. Of Catalan descent, their 
Music is imbued with the fiery passion of the Iberian tradition, tempered by the gracefulness of the Gallant style, which emerged late in the Baroque era. We will perform their entire trio sonata in D minor. It is in three movements.
The scores of the Plaza's instrumental works have survived in printed and manuscript sources. The music for the trio in D minor was published as three separate part books and did not contain a score. As is typical of the era, there are great inconsistencies in dynamics and articulations in those parts, as well as numerous printing errors. In the 18th century, performers would have been familiar with the performance practice of the language for articulation for much of the figuration in this music and would have added those articulations automatically. Our challenge today as performers and editors is to recreate this musical language that was taken for granted then. This slide shows various figurations with some common articulations that could be applied based on the figurations that you see there. In Baroque repertoire in general, note that articulation blocked out at the bottom with the red circle is an articulation associated with the classical era and not with the Baroque era. In the plot trios, the major editorial challenge was the dynamics and articulations in the source were very incomplete and inconsistent. So using our knowledge, we made editorial suggestions to fill in the gaps based on articulations they did include to make the parts more consistent. Inconsistencies are delineated here in red in the original. Below is our edition with suggested changes indicated in brackets. We resisted the temptation to add editorial articulations that we might add when performing the work ourselves, keeping our published editions more of an unedited or urtext style. Our next work is a flute sonata by the Italian composer Carlo Tessarini. This piece came to our attention while researching the known contents of Thomas Jefferson's music library. Jefferson was a violinist who played recreationally with his wife Martha and his daughter Patsy. He amassed a large collection of music, much of which survives, and the contents of which is documented in his journals. The sonatas of Tesserini are among the only flute works Jefferson collected. This work that we are going to show you and play for you provides an example of some challenges for performers and editors of Baroque music in interpreting rhythms that have been rather largely loosely notated by the composer, a practice that was commonplace in the music of this era. So in this slide you'll see in the area circled in red from the original source, there is a measure that actually does not work out mathematically. Um, so in our edition below, you'll see that um, we have uh, renotated it so that it does work out mathematically and is a little clearer for the performer. All of the manuscript and printed sources we will be showing and discussing contain a part for the basso continuum. During this era, the part consisted of only a bass line and numbers or figures representing the intervals to be played for creating harmony that would be filled out by a harpsichord or other keyboard instrument. Musicians of the era were all expected to be able to improvise these harmonies over the bass line. For many of our modern editions, we've created basso continuo realizations that are practical for those who cannot improvise. As with articulations and other expressive notations, in the, in the original sources, the uh, figures are often um, sparse, incorrect, or missing altogether. This slide shows the original uh, possessed only the baseline and the figures and with the uh, continual realization below. Now we will play two movements of the Sonata in J major by Carlo Tesserini.
most of the surviving music from the colonial period in Mexico, this is from about 1521 to 1820, is sacred. It's written for voices with instruments or orchestra. It was kept in the cathedrals and churches of Mexico City and other cities as Puebla, Oaxaca, Morelia, and Durango. Hundreds of polyphonic works, cantatas, villancicos, by Spanish, Flemish, and Mexican composers have been found and are now being studied and recently published. Even though secular music was much more susceptible of being destroyed because of wars, climate, and fires, a significant number of collections of instrumental music have, have survived, mainly for manuscripts for guitar, violin, and keyboard, uh, instrumental music as dances, sonatas, overtures, and marches, was played and heard in palaces, houses, theaters, colleges, as well as in sacred places of Mexico City. The manuscript you see here in the slide is from the Library of the Anthropology Museum in Mexico City. It's called 12 Sonatas a Solo Flauta e Basso. It's dated in Mexico in 1759 and it's one of the least known sources of instrumental music. And in fact, until very recently, there was no research on it. The importance of the source rests in the fact that it's the only surviving collection of 18th century music in Mexico, written specifically for the flute. It contains 12 sonatas of uh, the famous uh, author Pietro Antonio Locatelli, one by a certain Signore Puchinger, which is very little is known, a third one by a Spanish composer Luis Misson, you can see, you could see his signature there, and a number of dances from different sources, mainly minuets and marches for one or two flutes. Luis Misson, born in Barcelona, died in Madrid in 1766, was one of the most prolific and important Spanish musicians of the 18th century, especially known for his theatrical tonadillas. In his day, he enjoyed a well-deserved fame as a flutist and oboe player, and was referred to as the in inimitable, pleasant, delicate Orpheus of our century. He was part of the King's Royal Chapel of Music and belonged to the theater orchestra of the Buen Retiro. He also participated in musical academies organized by the Duke of Alba, whose archives housed a big collection of music, among uh, which we found six sonatas for Traverso and Continuo dedicated to the Duke. The sonata in A minor, which you see here and which we are going to perform today, only survives in this manuscript in Mexico City. It has not been found in Spain, um, but there is a late-breaking discovery in a private archive in Navarra, Spain, of additional chamber works by Misson, but this A minor sonata is not among those works. Um, the, the challenges of editing this music are pretty much the same as already mentioned. Uh, mistakes in accidentals or notes, inconsistencies of articulation, and especially that the bass has no figures at all. So they need to be added and probably the bass realized for those who are not used to playing from the uh, figured bass.
we will now discuss and play another work from a composer represented in Thomas Jefferson's music library. The Italian composer Carlo Antonio Campioni was a violinist and a prolific composer of solos, trio sonatas, and duets, which were very popular in England, France, and Holland. His works were highly regarded by Thomas Jefferson. He was, in fact, the only composer for whom Jefferson recorded a preference, writing, I would be glad to have everything else he has composed of duets, solos, and trios. The trio in C major we will perform shows the attractiveness of Campioni's style, displaying a vivaciousness and a lively interaction in his writing. In contrast to the original source of the Pla trios, the printed edition, old edition of the Campioni, shows much more care and consistency in the notation of articulations and dynamics with only minor omissions. You'll see in the slide that the editorial editions are minimal. In uh, measure three, the second flute is lacking slurs, which were added in our edition below, as well as the continuo realization. We will now play two movements of the trio sonata in C major by Campioni.
Sometimes our work as performers and editors involves not just filling out details, but providing a major reconstruction from an incomplete source. Such is the case that we will, that with the piece that we will play next, John Frederick Lamp's Cuckoo Concerto. Lamp was a German-born composer and bassoonist who immigrated to England, where he became a leading composer of English opera. His Cuckoo Concerto is a work that, especially in its third movement, effectively and humorously evokes the cuckoo's call. It has come down to us in the form of a keyboard short score with the solo line in the upper staff and a figured bass in the lower staff. However, the cover page of this source lists Lamp's original instrumentation as flute, strings, and continuo. The original source indicates where the tutti and solo passages are. We have used our experience playing dozens of Baroque concertos to fill in the orchestral parts with figuration taken from the flute part. These comp compositional devices are inspired by other concertos of the period, such as the recorder concerto in F major by Giuseppe Sammartini, a composer active in London during the same period. The Cuckoo Concerto is included on our recently released CD, Earthly Baroque. Since we do not have the full orchestral forces today, we have adapted our orchestration to include some of the orchestral writing in the second flute. Here you will see the cover page and the first page of our reconstruction along with the continual realization. Now we'll play the first movement of Lamp's Cuckoo Concerto.
As our presentation reaches its end, we'd like to thank the NFA for including our presentation and the programming chairs, Rebecca Johnson and Kate Henry. We would also like to give a very special thanks to Lisa Chofty, who was on the music faculty at the University of Utah for her incredible assistance with behind the scenes logistics for this program here in Salt Lake City. Uh, for more information about our ensembles, our concerts, our processes, our recordings, and our auditions, um, go to our websites and you'll find information there. We will, as our close, treat you to one additional movement by the Plaw Brothers, and then we will be happy to answer your questions as time permits.
the floor from the stage.